So if you guys um, came to the first two classes and you know we talked a little bit about the think process already. This is the nine steps to transition your business. So we talked a little bit about um, the think process already. We're going to do it again today just in terms of um, the adoption. That's the process. And then we're going to go on to challenge your systems and prepare and understand your contacts. <clears throat> so the challenger system part is basically what do you want to get out of command? If there's one thing that you can get from it, um, whether it's what your database does now or just something that it doesn't do now. Um, so we're going to talk about that and then we're going to go on to um, understanding and preparing your contacts. We'll, we'll go into command and set some custom fields and custom tags so that when we import next week, some things will be done already, okay? So the thing process of command is just the big picture. Uh, command allows you to spend more time doing what you do best, having more con conversations and building deeper relationships to earn more business. Um, so how will working with a platform built by agents for agents that <laughs> no additional costs, change the way you think about technology solutions, what is the one thing that you want Command to do for you? Um, and what steps will you take to learn more about Command? Obviously this class, but um, I would write down like what's the one thing that you want it to do. Okay. You may need to run your current systems parallel with command for a time until full adoption of command is complete and successful. Like I said, there's some things that um, aren't fully running in command now, like the um, email campaigns, right? So if you have to currently run eEdge at the same time as this one, that's okay for now, um, especially in that instance because we're not paying for either of them. There are some agents who are paying for a database um, that they might have to continue to run that for a while also until we can move it over. Okay, so what systems or tools do you use to manage your contacts and how do these tools work together? Um, and what do you need to know about your contacts to make your workflow effectively? So some examples are if you need to know the street address of your contacts for mailers, um, if you need to know the phone numbers or cell phone numbers for texting. In command there is something that you can uh, sign up for. It's called Twilio where you can mass text people. Um, so if that's something that's interesting to you, then you'd have to have their cell phone numbers. Um, do you have their emails for email blasts? you know, their birthday for birthday campaigns, just little things like that you get to think about um, ahead of time so that in the future your workflow is more seamless, okay? And then think about what, what groups you're going to put them in because that's kind of going to be the custom fields and custom tags that we're going to do today. So challenger systems is what do you want to accomplish. If you're using a CRM along with other applications you, that you may or may not want to be connected, uh, you're using a technology platform, you're using built on technology. This can force business processes to be adapted around the system, often resulting in inefficiencies. Okay, um, are these systems built for me or have I just adjusted my business around them? Um, what is truly important and what am I trying to accomplish? Okay. So then we noted what are the unique or non-standard fields you have captured in your current contact for each client. So examine your current contact record and compare the fields available in command. Okay. And then we can create custom fields and custom tags. So I'm going to show you what I mean by that. Okay, and I'm going to log in to eEdge since that's what I use. Okay. 
Okay, and then I'm going to log into command right next to it. Just agent.kw.com. Right. And compare those contacts. Just so you can see where the fields differ. Okay. You will only have two contacts on my agent.kw.com. Right, it's in some of the yeah. contacts. The, the, the contacts from my ES did import. Did you download them and then import them? Or did you just turn on your integration? I clicked import and then download the pre made CSV. Right, so then you'd have to put your contacts into that Excel file and, and upload them. So I can manually put all each one. You can in. you can export from eEdge. Really? And then import right into command. Okay. Right. So that's what we're gonna do next week. Um so then I'm not gonna that's right. <laughs> I would I would wait. <laughs> Unless you really want to try you can. I mean I you know. Know. um but we'll also turn on our integration. So that means, at least for me, it's been working with all the new contacts I put into EDGE. Like, I'm running both parallel, right? Okay. So I imported all of my contacts a few months ago from EDGE to command. And they all transferred all the information, you know, our last contact history, all came over. Okay. And then I turned on my integration and command, and now all the new contacts that I add in EDGE automatically pull over. But that initial batch did not. Okay, I had to, to do that. export and import. Yeah, which it was two clicks. It wasn't a hard transition, um, but they didn't like pull over by themselves. Okay, okay. but again, we're going to do that one <laughs> next week. Okay. okay. So in Market Leader, if I clicked Add Contact, you'll see a ton of fields. Right. And now we're going to do this okay, thing. EDGE. Right. So this one's for Market Leader, which is eEdge, mm -hmm. and this one's KW Command. So just so that we see the differences. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we'll see in. Um, command, we have a lead source option, okay, and a stage is a little bit different. It's captured, connected, or qualified, where in the edge it's a little bit different. So those are things like we have a type and a subtype or category that we can type in. Um, so that's something that we're going to have to think of when moving them to command. You know, do you know what stage or preferred method of contact your clients prefer, or, or what stage they're even at? You know, so we have some system tags that are already created for us, and then we have some custom tags. So right now it says I have no options because we have to create them in the backside the settings. Um, which we can do in a little bit. Okay, so all this stuff is the same. I don't think we have a social ID in Market Leader, which is really cool actually, because it's going to connect, um, Command connects to all your social medias for when you do get to make your campaigns and these workflows, because you'll be able to attach it right to social media like ads, for Facebook, and I'm hoping that there'll be some relation if you put their if you put their social tag in command, like their profile ID. I don't know how it would do it, but if somehow it could connect or like send stuff to them, if you have it in there, that because would be cool. Of, because some of your friends that are on Facebook, you don't necessarily have their addresses or things like that. So oh, right. Somehow. Contact them, right, yeah. or, or or have them yeah. as a touch. Yeah, that would yeah, be great. Exactly. Okay, and then custom fields. Again, we're going to do that part today later also. Okay. In eEd, we do have this groups section, which makes it nice, um, that we don't yet have in command. 
I'm hoping that that's going to be part of your custom custom fields. I'm thinking are similar to a group. As soon as command is functioning in all the same ways that ES is, so it has the capabilities to do that and more. Mm -hmm. um, there are just things that aren't running the same way. Like I always use the campaign as a, an example. Right now on eEdge, they're all like the preemie templates yeah, that yeah. You, know, you can just personalize yeah, and send out. Like right, and we're going to have them in command also, but they're not there yet. Oh, there you know what I mean? I don't oh. think that they have the pre-made ones at all yet. Oh. I don't want to start a rumor, <laughs> but I heard that um, around May or June they might be out. And I know that that's when the 33 touch for E-Edge ends at the end of June. So I don't know if that's like KW's timeline that right. they're trying to have theirs ready by the time that E-Edge yeah. ends. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm hoping that's mm -hmm. how it's going to work. Right. You know, I don't want everyone to start new ones on E-Edge and then have to create new ones again in command. Like that wouldn't be you know, beneficial of our time. But. Okay, so those are just a couple examples of the things that we're going to have to um, know for our context that we did in NE Edge. Okay. A big question is how do you handle contact records for your partners or spouses? Um, do you combine them into one record or separate them into two records that are linked together? So if you saw in command down here, it says relationship, right? So I can click that, is there even spouse? Yeah, right here. I could put spouse and I can put, you know, someone else's information in there and add the relationship to one contact. But if you want both parties to get the email, mm -hmm. I don't believe that um, command will send out, like it'll nest them together, but both people won't get that campaign email. Right. And eEdge works the same way. So what I always told people was that you should make two contacts, okay? But if you have a physical address, just put that in one of them. So if I had um, Val and Tom, right, I could put both names in one of them with the mailing address so that if I ever sent a mailer, it would be addressed to both of them and then just have like Tom's email address in that one and then I'll make a separate contact that says just Val with Val's email and no physical address because when the emails go out, they don't say the person's name. So they don't know that one's addressed to Val and Tom and one's just addressed to Val, you know. Um, but then since Val's contact wouldn't have the physical address, if you ever did mailers, it would only send to the Val and Tom one. Okay. So I know it's like an extra step because then you have to add two contacts. Um, I don't know if that's something that they're going to change. I hope so because a lot of people have, you know, it's always an issue. Yeah. So I thought they had pet in here, but they don't. <laughs> that would be fun, though, right? <laughs> I guess you could just put that in the notes section. Okay. Um, and then, which contact record fields are most critical for sorting, categorizing, or segmenting your clients? What custom tags, groups, or identifiers do you use to understand your relationship between people um, to target your communication? So. I always described that one in Market Leader as as your groups because you're not going to say the same thing to everybody. Okay, so when you're sending out those emails, you know you might say something different to your buyers that you would your sellers, or you would say something different to um, some vendors or agents that you have in your database versus your family or your clients or your sphere. You know, 
So that's something I would take note of too, because I'm going to translate all these groups into my custom fields. Okay. So when I'm in command, underneath my name, it says settings. Okay, and right on the left hand side it says custom fields and custom tags. So under custom fields I have all these ones already in here and I think they are from when I imported from eEdge. Do you have them in yours? I didn't. Oh, okay. I didn't didn't go. Yet, oh, right, but yeah. what are you in your custom field? Yeah, I don't and there's have nothing there. So I think yeah. mine's from importing. Yeah. So I can delete all these, um, but I'm going to create a new custom field. So they give you some examples like favorite sports teams or hometown. I didn't even think of that one. That's a good one, the sports teams, because if it's the Phillies and you know during baseball season, like home opener or what, it's sometimes a good time for a touch. It's an easy phone call, you know. Um, it's an easy, some people do the calendars that are, you know, the sports yeah. calendars, the Eagles. Like it's always just an easy when you know something about that person. Again, people can be in more than one group. So you don't have to worry about that part. Right. So my custom field is going to be sphere. And I guess it would just be a text field. I'm going to create another one. And let's try favorite. I'm just doing examples. Okay. Yeah, I'm seeing how it works. And I'm going to not make this one a D a default custom field just to see what the difference is. Okay. So that when I go back to command to create a contact, I want to see if it shows up in that. Okay. So by checking off that default custom field it means it shows up on my add a contact. Um, see, so I made my sphere a default one, but not the favorite sports one, okay. so that one doesn't show up. I guess I can make it there too. Okay, I'm going to go back to settings and create a custom tag. So this one I have none already. So create a new tag. So this one seems more like it's um, more direct to, to a group than the custom field. So that's my fault. But um, the custom tag, since it says like a builder or luxury platinum cl club, I would assume this is where like if it's a vendor, right, mm -hmm. or if it was a buyer or another agent, I would put that in here. That way you can, it's like a, a tag color, so in your database it will show up all the same color for, for all right, and right. And then I guess you get the custom fields part is just the um, unique identifiers inside of those right. groups. Okay. Right. So let's try one. Okay. I'm going to go back to 
command. I just put myself in to see how it works. So you can sort and filter by your system tags, which I have everyone like in the Newtown agent as a system one, but you can sort by your custom tags too. Right, so I put myself in that way. You can search by last contacted, date of birth. Huh, if they have neighbors, that's a new one. Um, their ownership type. So that was when we spoke about um, which one would be most important to you when categorizing identifiers, tags for sorting and things like that. Yeah. Okay. So we kind of just spoke about this, but it's just customizing command for your business. Um, command is more than a CRM. It's a platform that puts you in control of your database, uh, your business, and your future. So prepare to sync your contacts and support your business process by making a few key customizations um, to custom fields, custom tags, and sales pipeline stages. So we didn't talk about the sales pipeline stages. Um, we're going to do that in another class. Um, but what applications do you need to connect in command? If you haven't already watched those things on YouTube, because we did connect a lot of the um, applications that we use already as an office, but if you had any separate ones, you can do that. And we had on our, our list that we were going to do a um, clean up command, but it says it's a full database wipe, and I'm nervous that if I do it, it's going to yeah. take everything out. Let's see. Hmm. Okay, so they have this in eEdge, too, which I learned the hard way. So if you archive contacts and you want to, you know, like in Dalu, how you can't delete anything, everything's archived. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they have that in here too, where like you archive it, and if you did it by accident, you can unarchive them. Um, but it makes it a little bit difficult to delete contacts okay. like permanently. So if you did pull everybody in, right, because you wanted to try to do it by yourself and, and it just didn't work out the way that you wanted to in ES. Um, then we can come in here and completely wipe the database and then start new. Okay. Do you guys have qu questions about preparing your database? Or Actually, I have them in here, so I must have. Maybe I cleaned with it last time. Maybe, yeah. Uh, now I see them, they're all in here. So now I can go back and I'm doing like tags by agent. Mm -hmm. It's just so different. It is. Um, 
it's weird because it's the same, but it's different. <laughs> so um, we've been going by this nine steps to transition your business. Okay, if you want to find it, you would go into your n normal mykw.kw.com. Okay, and then at the top it'll say education, and then it's technology tech enabled agent, and it'll bring you to this page. If you scroll down just a little bit, it has tier one guides, and right here is your nine steps to transition your business to command. Did you click education first? Oh, I went to technology. Okay, education. And then and then it's technology okay. tech enabled agent. Okay. So this week was just about preparing, right? Because next week we're gonna actually do the importing, so it's gonna be the workshop style. Okay. Um so it's gonna be a lot, which is why we're talking so much about preparing it, because we want everyone to be on the same page when they get here. Okay. okay. So if mine are already in here, I probably don't have to change anything as far as, okay. Probably not, no. Okay. And then um, our transition, once your contacts are in command, what we'll talk about um, being hyper-local, um, and then we're going to go into opportunities, the sales pipeline. Okay, so that's all, all in the future. But today was just just the process of getting prepared. So. Okay.